Welcome everyone, you are watching and perhaps listening to Calling the Audible, the flagship show of the FPF Podcast Network. It has been seven awesome seasons and this one, of course, has been better than all the others. Uh, I am Pease Delores, your host for the official Division D Podcast. If you're watching us, you know you're watching us live at the Sportira Cage, where if it's in the game, it's in the cage. Uh, and of course, if you've yet to get a uh, uniform for next season, remember it's never too early to order. Um, and you can do so, of course, by ordering through Sportier, our official FPF uniform provider. They do good work. They have some samples out there from some some uh, uh, some teams FPF have teams passed. that have that have had the, the jerseys made. Eagle, I'm aware that there's a banner behind me. I'm going to get there. Don't worry. Everyone, remember, there's a banner behind me. Uh, so I think I think I spoke enough about the sponsors that will get paid. GM Collectors, thank you for joining me in studio. You mentioned Someone, that this was the uh, the best podcast by far. Is is there some sort of comparison that we're going through? Yeah. Or is it just for a fact? <coughs> the, it, it's basically it's it depends on who hosts the show. So oh. therefore, the ones I host are top two, and then there's the ones hosted by Slogan. Are you kidding me? There's a reason why I put this podcast late night. Because but, uh, you'll never walk alone prime time, which is musty TV. Or musty. Yeah, yes, because you're right. You're David Letterman had no staying power to the late night. You're right. Ooh. Absolutely. Uh, GM Collectors. So you, you put the worst show last? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like, uh, wow, I hate to be your career. <laughs> the, it's like an infomercial over here, you know? <laughs> In yeah. any case. It's kind of like having a radio show at midnight. Um, Post game. So, <laughs> We have uh, Jim Collectors, of course. You can follow him at GM Cole 44. Uh, Eagle of Master Control is a company man, of course. You can follow him at Eagle FPF. Uh, we have Mo Khan in studio as well uh, with our little playful banter to start the show. Of course, the greatest and highest rated show in, of the FPF podcast network, as well as the longest lasting show, of course. I'm no free long lasting. Mo Khan, not so much. Um, so, everyone, how was your week? How was your week, GM? Um, I won. I went 2 0 this week. Yes, you did. We'll talk about uh, one of those games a little bit later today. Uh, Eags, how was your week? I got an interception. Shut I up. I got an interception. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Rosenblatt threw it right to him. Yeah. It's like Jeff Rosenblatt scanned the field. No open receivers. So the Eagle. Eagle. <laughs> MK, how was your week, buddy? I was Vice President of Eternal Relations here at FPF. Made up title. Cool. With uh, Darren it. Bass being, being the face and leader of our great league of ours. I That's hope why you were no face. longer able to do your duties of posting the previews of each podcast on the FPF wall? Well, I have other important issues to worry about, such as guys who may or may have not played in Division D games, which we'll get to right now. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we'll talk about some guys who played, first of all. We had... Uh, Diablos uh, taking on Bronx Bombers. The Diablos won 42-39. Alex Holowak texted me after the game uh, about one of my former teammates. Uh, he said, in, in no short order, George Boyer is the best receiver I've ever played against. Uh, having played with him, I can tell you he's super underrated. Uh, the cap hit is peanuts for what he can bring to your team. Not always the best stats, but it's just sometimes he just hasn't played on a system long enough uh, to, 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 to put up big numbers. Uh, but to be honest, I've, he's just a great dude. And the, the numbers he puts up, uh, he's been putting up this season are absolutely tremendous. Jim, what do you think of that assessment? Do you think he is, in fact, a top-tier receiver in Division D? I think permitted in the role that he fits in, like, in certain offenses, he won't excel as well as in, say, this Diablo's offense. Um, being paired, especially having him back now with a player like Gab Wiseman, those two have great chemistry together. Um, they, they know how to run their routes to really get the other one open. So you saw in the Bronx Bombers game when the defense started to key in on um, on George Ellie Voye, Wiseman was the one who was open, and then vice versa. It's, it's very much a pick your poison type scenario. However, George Voye, just fantastic attitude, fantastic routes, is usually an asset to whatever team he's on. Absolutely. Uh, Diablos are 3 and 1 in the last four games. Can they keep this trajectory heading into the playoffs? Mo, if you can get the, the, the schedule Which ahead I have ready for to go. awesome. Uh, GM, before we look at the schedule per se, do you think that the team made up as it is? Uh, can keep this going into the playoffs. Which are we talking about Bronx Bombers or uh, Diablos. Diablos? Diablos. Diablos. Yeah, I think that they tend to make the necessary adjustments, if any, in the second half. And you t you see that in their win over Pardon My Swag, even in the loss against Formerly 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 Teamless, they they start off doing really poorly at times, adjust and really right the ship. You saw that in this game as well, mm -hmm. whereas um, Bronx Bombers were really back and forthing and had the lead at one point, and when the game came on the line, um, Diablos just made those clutch plays and put it out of reach. And just a quick point by George Elie Voye. I mean, he's had two games of over 120 yards receiving. 
Other games, six yards, nine yards, and 15 yards. So it's really hit or miss with him this year where he can really be a grand slam or just hit a single for you, and that's it. That's I all. remember one season uh, on a podcast I was asked uh, one word to, and, and, and it was like, you know, there was different players, mm-hmm. and, and they asked me about George L.A. Voye and said one word, and I said, faster, and that he's faster than you, than think. you think he is. Uh, he's, he's deceptively quick. Honestly, I can talk all day about him, but I don't want to because the gushing over my friends just makes me less and less popular with him. But I will schedule. S- yes. I, yeah, I will, I will oh. say exactly. Looking at their schedule, what do you say they have some? Well, we've got so many keys, which I believe uh, PZLZ will have uh, a hand in that game. Hopefully. Potentially. It would be not, it would Usually, be nice. it's best to have two. Ideally. He's good with one hand. No. Uh, five star prospects, which will be their ninth game. I don't even know to go with that one. <laughs> and uh, to close out the year, DG Goons. So, so I, I think with that schedule in mind, these are all games that they can keep within reach. Um, five-star prospects are def- is definitely the strongest of those three teams, but at the same time, the Diablos don't want to play down to their competition as well because a lot of these teams are really itching for an upset win right now. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, James Nowakowski uh, should hold his head up high after this game, but what do you think he needs to do to get on that next level? I think at the moment he needs to really trust his first read rather than if it's not 100% there looking around back and forth and then finally scrambling and dumping it. I think that's where a lot of his interceptions are coming from where he's a little bit more panicked where he can't buy as much time with his feet and he just chucks the ball up. I think he needs to really get familiar with his routes and just not look back whenever he makes that read. That's fair. These nuts took on Jaegerbaum uh, were two of, the te- yeah. two of the strongest teams in the divisions facing off. Did you expect the game to look as ugly as it did? I'm, I'm going to sit on the fence for this one. because it On the cage, perhaps? Yeah, I'm going to sit on the cage, and it may come out with some punctures. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> it's very unpleasant, I can tell you. I wouldn't have thought it looking at this game, but it doesn't surprise me. Okay. These two teams who have been very solid and very consistent all year um, have very strong defenses in fact I think both their defenses are just as good if not better than their respective offenses and we were treated to see both of them go back and forth on this game with these nuts coming out ahead at the yeah. end really coming up with those clutch plays clutch interceptions Mike Zanone is probably the most underrated defensive player in Division D yeah I would agree with that. Actually, I don't. I, yeah, I think he might even be one of, of the more. That's not being the voice of reason in this game wow. at one point. Uh, as as uh, a couple of guys were getting into it, he was getting saying, "Okay, guys, calm down, calm down," which shows a remarkable amount of growth. He's been a guy who's been known to be a little fiery, uh, mm-hmm. a guy who's taken maybe a couple of shots of players now and then. Uh, but you know what? Overall, he actually is a really great guy. Just plays really intense. So I'm happy to see he's 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 really understanding his role as a leader on this team. I think if you sorry to cut you off, but if you measure cap space against so um, what someone's done in a season, I think that right now Mike Sinone is probably at the top. He's a very cap friendly player, but just destroys it on the field. And they're going to need someone to calm the team down because at the end of the game, they were obviously not happy with their performance. And you saw Dave Dau not yelling, but screaming at the field, and everyone could hear it. And he was losing his mind at everyone thinking, oh, we I need to play that. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mo was on the other side of the building. Yeah. He actually yes, threw the ball against the wall. It's, I mean, not really the composure you expect from your quarterback. Um, in, in this game, we saw Simon Deschain throwing three interceptions. Was it an ugly game for him, or, or are these nuts just that good on defense? I, I think I'm going to pinpoint it a little bit more to the rush as well. It's not just these nuts defense, but their rush as well. The rush of Devin, Devin Dau, who is absolutely a thorn in the side of any quarterback he goes up against. And it's really apparent. So in, in Jaegerbaum's losses right now, um, Simon Deschain, who's normally very, very good with his feet, the second you find a rusher who can beat him, the whole that whole offense falls apart. In their two losses, um, Duchenne was sacked more than three times and threw multiple interceptions. So I think the fact that when he doesn't have the ability to really buy time with his feet, if those short reads aren't open, he's toast. That's fair. Just a quick point here. Sorry, uh, Go PZ, ahead. Just a quick point here. In their championship run last year, in which they lost in the finals in winter season, 23 TDs, 4 INTs, 10 sacks, but he had less than 1,000 yards that season here. So and how many rushing touchdowns? Uh, rushing touchdowns in terms of what his total was last season. Uh, in the winter season, 22 carries, 185 yards, and 2 TDs. Interesting. This year, I thought it would be. zero rushing TDs. 
Yeah, and, but a lot of it is what the, the running he does behind line of scrimmage and, and getting guys open with his feet yes. and being able to deliver on the run. Uh, so absolutely facing a rusher as good as, as Devin Dewey, who's probably one of the top rushers in the division, um, makes a huge difference. Um, these nuts are 5-2, and two, but haven't always looked impressive. Do you think they're a legit contender? I think so. Um, I mentioned before, you didn't think of, you're saying, are they a legit contender a couple, of se- a couple of weeks ago? You asked me for my dark, ho- dark horse pick, and I said, these nuts, and you said, I don't know if they really count as a dark horse pick. So, But as the season continues, yeah, though. but I need to call you out for consistency. That's though. fair. That's not, but I'm saying, looking at them to be before the season, I thought they would be a strong team. And then I've kind of been like, okay, well, they're winning games, but they're, n- they're not always looking good. So at this point, I wouldn't say dark horse necessarily, but I would say that, like, <laughs> are they are they a solid team that's underperforming? Yes, are they a solid team that's underperforming? And 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 will they be able to turn around for playoffs? Is probably a better better way to phrase that question. Yeah, I have no doubt in my mind. I think there's enough talent in this team. Um, the addition as well of Joel Malkin has been huge for them. Uh, really physical body makes those catches in traffic. Um, you can you can hold him. You can knock him around a little bit. He still delivers. Uh, Concordia receiver as well. Concordia Stingers receiver. Just an absolute solid player. And with his height and his hands, it's difficult to find a better receiver in Div D. Fair. Uh, we have one. Well, two final games to talk about. One we'll get into a little bit more in more depth. Uh, and hooligans coming up with their second win of the season. They beat uh, the Global Gym. Purple Cobras by a score of 27 to 25. Uh, GGPC won their first three games, but haven't won since. Will they win another game this season? And uh, MK, if you can dig up the schedule, that'd be super helpful. It's been odd because I kept thinking that like some of uh, the other teams in this division, defenses would be good enough to carry the offense. And I thought that this would be one of those cases where the core of defenders, Joey Taylor, Danny Allward, um, Alex Joltepuff, would be enough that even with a first-time quarterback and a sort of fizzling, lackluster offense, it would be enough considering the experience they have on this team to really propel them forward and cause those turnovers to give that offense more and more opportunities to score. Uh, the remaining schedule left, uh, DG Goons, next game in Brossard. Then they play Show Me Your TDs, and they have part of my swag to end off the year. Sorry. So do you think, the, going back to my initial question, mm-hmm. would, do you think uh, Global Gym Purple Cobras will win another game? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Good. So lots to look forward to for them. Hooligans made the switch to EVA on at quarterback. They are 1-1. Yeah, oh. Since that decision, was it the right call? From, from what I understood, there was a little bit of dissension among the ranks within um, hooligans, not to name names, but they were looking for something to really revitalize this team, this sort of core of players, uh, Jeff Brown, Sonny Chan, Matt Brown, that, that core, and bringing Chris Olsen back didn't seem to do it, mm-hmm. so I, th- I think that the change from Chris to Avi was necessary, mm-hmm. and it's, it's paying dividends for them so far. Has Chris moved to receiver on that team now? I know for sure he played one game yeah, at receiver. I don't, I don't know think about he was the second this one. Past week. I don't think he was there this past week. Um, what did the hooligans do in the second half to halt the, the Global Gym Purple Cobras defense who just looked completely, completely different in the second half? It, it all comes down to just the, the veteran adjustments on this team. I, I mentioned before that this is a team that's really um, played as a core and we're looking for something different. They know how to adapt to games and they've, they've played a lot of football. Jeff Brown, Matt Brown, especially Sonny Chan, they've been in this league for a long, long time. So making second half adjustments against a quarterback who's not maybe 100% sure of himself is huge in this case. That's fair. And one final game. Formerly teamless... Formerly overrated, currently winning games. Uh, I gotta say, uh, FFFT beating Shomir TDs 30 to 12. More like a beatdown, actually. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, agree, no. I wouldn't agree, Mokan. Like the, the score, the score did get out of hand, but uh, two 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 drives got into the red zone where Mike Adana threw interceptions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it was. It could have been a lot more competitive than it was. It was. It um, was a fierce game by Francois Delory. I've never seen him so focused in a game. I've played with him for seasons, and he was just. There were that there game. were a couple of plays where it was like a, a t- dual layer uh, read where. Uh, Mike was essentially reading me at the front of the end zone and Alex David at the back of the end zone. And I made the same read as Mike. I thought that Deloria was on me. And then when I saw the ball in the air, I saw, oh my God, he's back there. And it was a pick. And I don't know how we even got back there in time. Um, it was honestly, uh, 
the team was well put together. It, it was a well played game. John Brown, we said John Brown can't throw long, uh, and he made us pay for it all game as he as he as he scored multiple long touchdowns. Against even us. even with that, John Brown's offense seems to sort of slow down the pace of the game. I think that's why the defense not only looks so big, but if you look, John Brown doesn't even come close to leading for pa- for touchdown passing statistics mm-hmm. right now. Um, on the other side of the ball. Um, Show me your TD's defense made up a little bit for their offense. They were very, very consistent, very strong. Kept John guessing. Um, the defenders in front of me, Adam Parasuko, very underrated defender. Right, rookie. Never rookie played a down football well. his life. Great rush. Except and for yeah, the first great. Play. Uh, Villa Forte is a beast of a rusher. Yeah. I think um, the second he gets himself a little bit more in control, he's going to do some serious damage to opposing QBs. I think so as well. Honestly, he's, uh, he's one of the great guys to play with. Uh, despite, our, despite the season, and Mike Adonis said on the sideline, and I'm inclined to agree with him, uh, this, th- despite the fact that we, we haven't been winning games, this is some of the most fun we've ever had playing together. So I'm really happy with the guys on the team, and it's, it's been a great time either way. If any listeners want to see a summarized play-by-play of that game, they can follow to Twitter. It's a very feed. slanted and biased <laughs> play-by-play <laughs> as uh, GM's pet. The eagle of master control uh, basically stroked his ego amongst other body parts uh, throughout uh, the bulk of that game. Uh, but I will say, uh, Eagle, thanks for showing up. Thanks for, for uh, live tweeting. Uh, and then we we'll never talk about our teams again this season. Yeah, that's pretty much the last time. So uh, <laughs> sorry, hour. guys. I know you also paid, but it sucks to be you. Maybe play with someone else next time. Uh, that being said, when we come back, we're going to make some in-depth picks. Uh, we'll, spend a, we'll spend a minute or so on each team, and uh, we will uh, pick winners for this coming week. Well, has been brought to you by the English Montreal School Board's DEAL program. Distance education for all learners will allow you to obtain your high school diploma or prerequisites for stage up or vocational studies from the comfort of your own home. It's never too late to go back to school. Learn anywhere at your own pace and get your diploma. Call 514-788-5937 for information or visit www.distanced.ca for more details. Welcome everyone you are listening to and perhaps watching uh, Calling the Audible. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Hi mom. Um, hi mom. <laughs> uh, by that I mean GM's mom. Um, I kind of wish we were brothers. I'm joined in the studio by GM Kalethris, Mr. Collect Your Ass, known to uh, by his friends and co-workers, family members, and local pastor. Um, <laughs> The uh, Eagle of Master Control is in his nest turning knobs. Uh, we also have our producer, uh, Mo Khan, who is doing everything he can to keep me on the rails. It's not as easy as it looks. Actually, outgoing vice president of internal relations. At Again, yeah. it's a made-up title, but it makes him feel special, so we're letting him have it. Um, uprising, anyone? Uprising? Uprising? Yeah, uprising? uprising? <laughs> you have selected Regicide. <laughs> if you know the name of the king or queen being murdered, press 1. So let's take a look at some of the upcoming games because we're going to start talking about playoff standings in, in future weeks. So this is our last chance to really talk about every team. So I won't spend too much time on it, but let's look at each team. GM, I'll throw the game at you. You give me your analysis and make a pick. Uh, MK, feel free to jump in whenever you like with whatever insight you got. And I opened the wrong division, so I will continue to stall. Um, and, and this is, like I said, it's our last chance to look at it. So let's... Uh, take a look at who we think will win games in week eight heading into the final push towards the playoffs I've finally used up all the words I know and we have in front of us the Tyrants schedule <laughs> versus Crimson Tide I was gonna jump in but I figured it was a little bit better to watch you grasp at straw yeah it was pretty good, it was pretty good. Um, I was a little bit let down at um, the Tyrants loss this week to five star prospects I thought that they really would have um, figured them out that being said this is another game that has potential to be as close as the last one was I however think that the deep threats that um, Crimson Tide possess are gonna be a little bit too much for the um, for the di- Tyrants defense to handle. I think it's going to be a little bit difficult right now. This game will be a shootout, and I think that Crimson Tide have the offensive and defensive firepower to I have to disagree with you, though, GM. I think the Tide almost choked that game away against DG Goons. They're up 25-6 at half. They're down 26-25 late in the second half. They end up winning the game by six, whatever it was. I think they're too inconsistent. I mean, fast starts, but they can't finish off when they have to. And that could cost them maybe a playoff spot if if they do get the playoffs, maybe opportunity to upend the hierarchy and maybe not go as far as they should. We have, uh, in the second game, part of my swag taken on five-star prospects. 
I think that five star prospects are starting to find themselves as a team a little bit more. Like I said, that upset, not necessarily an upset win, but a surprise win over the Tyrants. Uh, Jordan Moses is doing better and better as the um, as the season rolls around. We've talked ad nauseum about uh, uh, Jeremy Anderson. Tevin Nichols was back in the, the game as well, had some key receptions. I really like um, five star prospects for this one. It's just, it seems almost like a rebuilding season for Pardon My Swag right now. Uh, Brad Evans brings in guys tries them out sometimes they get um, kept on the team sometimes they get put back to wherever they were I think this is the in-between season for part of my swag right now fair hooligans versus formerly formerly teamless for sorry formerly 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 teamless uh, Mokan what's your pick well I take great pride by the fact that I do have a, a helping hand as a consultant for a formerly formerly <laughs> formerly <laughs> teamless so I will continue on with my consulting views and support my team formerly 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 teamless I think I think they'll win as well I got the ch- chance to see them firsthand this week do like this the is the do. first time where I get to offer insight because it's the first time I have a little bit more uncertainty on my team. The notable thing about hooligans, despite their record, despite their inconsistencies, is that Jeff Brown and Avieillon have played with formerly, formerly teamless and formerly teamless. They know John Brown very well. They know his play calling style. And that's a little bit more cause for concern. Um, it's going to take formerly, formerly, formerly teamless a little bit more thinking outside the box on this one compared to their usual plays. That's fair. Hot Boys Hotline versus Junkyard Dogs. It's strange because the last two times, uh, the last time this team played each other, um, it was in last s- last spring in Division E, where Junkyard Dogs took this game handedly. Um, it's it's very odd considering the trajectory that these two teams are on right now in Division D. But I'm very much um, wanting to lean towards the side of history right now because Jason Rossi has played against this team before. He knows um, how they work, what worked against them, and what didn't. So I'm going to still stick with Junkyard Dogs on this one. Just a little food for thought. Uh, Junkyard Dogs' game is in question with Tomahawk Nightmare because they may may have played with an ineligible player who wasn't allowed to play in that division. Oh, interesting. Who would that have been? Uh, I don't know if I'm about to re- reveal that or not. Why not? It's a fact. It happened. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Fred Millette then. Uh, Fred Millette uh, <laughs> uh, allegedly may have played with the Junkyard Dogs, and the FPF is trying to confirm this. And if that is the case to be, then the game would be a loss for Junkyard Dogs. And Millette should know better. Well, that's it, though. They're trying to Consi- verify. And, but Considering not how many times it's happened not the teams he's played on. Exactly. And the fact that like they, Millette willingly brought in Rashid Ben Ablicator last season, like knowing that he would lose and did it anyways. Like I, I have... No sympathy for this right now. Um, I feel bad if Junkyard Dogs were misled and he told them, no, I don't play in Division D, but... Well, funny enough, his Warhawks are doing pretty well. I thought they would know. Any I am a Red Bullet. I, I don't play for anyone. I'm good to go. <laughs> Any other anonymous sources you want to expose while you're at it? Uh, sources close to my situation do not allow me to say who the source no, but look, here. is. It's the look, 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 executive guys, vice president. Let's stop, let's stop uh, pretending it's more than it is. Scorekeepers believe that this was the guy they saw play in a previous game. That he played in, if he did in fact play a second game it's an illegal roster uh, FPF is going to reach a decision soon it always they, they, they tend to get it right and they tend to get it right quickly I have my full trust in acting uh, pre- a- a- acting commissioner uh, Darren Basmajan so honestly Darren whatever you decide you have the full support of the media team and of most <laughs> FPF members and, his right hand and if you're wrong we will make fun of you forever about it that uprising. end uprising 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 well, actually I can never I'm um, close to the Darren show me your TDs against the uprising Diablos. I like Diablos right now. Um, I mentioned before, Gavin Wiseman is back in the picture for this team. Um, he's likely to play out the rest of the season and be playoff eligible. I think he brings a lot to this team, even with their ability to adjust in the second half. Um uh, I, w- I want to believe for showing me your TDs, especially considering the defensive output they had, but I'm not convinced right now. Uh, Les Afro versus Blue Devils. How close or far apart will this game be? I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be closer than we think. I still think Les Afro are going to win. If Blue Devils have Kevin Lubin on for the rest of the season, he at least makes the games a little bit closer and more competitive, and I know Eagle has a little bit more insight on this. Yeah, just to add to that, so I was watching um, the Blue Devils on uh, Monday night play their game, and Kevin Lubay is there, and he's calling their defense, so he's bringing a lot of things that they didn't understand before on how to basically run stuff, and that game turned into extra and extra point game. They only lost by two points. Gotham Knights versus Bromigos. Um... Bromigos have been impressing me more and more as of recently. Gotham Knights are coming off of a, um, a win against Hot Boys Hotline. However, 
something about my gut wants me to go with Bromigos on this one, considering they're consistently improving. Wolfpack, Bronx Bombers. Wolfpack versus Bronx Bombers? Mm -hmm. It's strange. Wolfpack have added uh, JC Mercil as well, who's a red zone rusher for them. Great receiver. Terry Tam starting to have a lot more faith in him, even in the second game. But Bronx Bombers, th this team on paper, I think they should be far better than they are, and I still haven't lost my faith in them. So I think that they haven't shown us their true potential yet. DG Goons, Global Gym, Purple Cobras. Is this where Global Gym get their next win? Yes, I think so. Um, DG Goons are very frustrated right now. Um, Derek Fontana was talking to me about how he was upset in the Crimson Tide game where there were a lot of uh, deep targets late in the game that they could have put away. But DG Goons were just drop unable, balls on their part as well. unable to execute exactly. A lot of drop balls. It doesn't help. Uh, receivers not making catches and a frustrated QB equals a bad time. Lays egg versus backyard bullies. Backyard bullies are fantastic right now. We mentioned Brian Mangeau, what he brings to this team. I think that they're going to be a thorn in the side of Lays egg. Rich Humes, just going to be fantastic, both on the run and passing. That's fair. Um, Sticky Hands Warhawks. Do Warhawks stay undefeated? Yes. Um, Sticky Hands barely show up to six game in, game out. When they do, they don't even have the same consistent roster. Sorry. All right. Will the Alpha T's upset Jaegerbaum? I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because even though the Alpha T's just lost to um, Warhawks, they brought in Joel Jules. Mokan would know Joel Jules is the starting quarterback for... Miguel Redman. Miguel Redman. Yet fits in the cap because he did very poorly in Division 2. Okay. So he's cap friendly. And... Um, this is a team that also fits really well. I want to verify that, actually. I actually didn't put the Joel well, it was misspelled the name. So mm -hmm. we have to verify that cap number. But out no, no, no. He, I, I checked both profiles because oh, okay, I didn't want to come on with bad information. He's rated a 71. They, which, which they've, they've also fit Julien Bellavance onto the roster Yes, before. I, that, I don't know if that's going to be if permanent or not, but that's a game-breaker as well. It's not permanent, but if, if they can fit both players on the roster, this becomes a team that is already very strong, uh, one of the strongest new teams I've seen in a while. Uh, if they can fit both pieces in there, absolutely game-changing. Um, and now we have these Nuts taking on Tomahawk Nightmare in the final game of the week. These Nuts defense, fantastic. Tomahawk Nightmare's offense, inconsistent at best. Well, I mean, what if Fred Millet quarterbacks? Maybe. Well, Jeff Marquis, <laughs> I believe, is in uh, Madrid right now. So, yeah. So, I guess it depends on whether or not Marquis will be back. Well, no, but they... maybe that means that Millet can QB for Tomahawk Nightmare instead. That'd be, that'd be interesting. That'd be interesting. Uh, we unprecedented, so to speak. Uh, what is unprecedented, however, is uh, uh, the segment we've started to end the show with. It's ridiculous. Uh, it is ridiculous, but it is my favorite time of the week. It's Out of Bounds with GM. Every week, I post fake topics in... Uh, my article and we decided let's not make them fake topics anymore let's, uh, let's address each one of them so we're going out of bounds with GM GM let's start with what is the most awkward shape for walk-in closets I put a lot of thought into this one because I mean walk-in closet live in the dream am I right that's the uh, idea exactly so I thought what would be the most frustrating thing about a walk-in closet not being able to see everything in your closet so an L shape mm -hmm. Mokan would you like to have a Christopher walk-in closet Oh yeah, I'm very uh, fed with how my clothes look in my closet, so I always put it by color coordination and styles. Yes, but I'm talking about a Christopher walk-in closet. Yeah, I would. Where, where everything in your closet where is he talks Christopher walk-in. Oh, yeah. yeah. He puts the clothes in the only place he knows. <laughs> do do the claustrophobic enjoy them as much? I think so. There's a visible way out. You you walked in there. There's ample lighting usually because you want to be able to see all your clothes. Yeah. Do the claustrophobic enjoy Christopher walk-in movies? No. Not at all. I don't think so. Martha Stewart gives three pieces of information, uh, three pieces of advice for the playoffs. Uh, let's address each one, and you tell me how it relates. One, so the pie isn't perfect, cut it into wedges. If it's not perfect, what you want to do is you want to make adjustments to really um, make it more presentable and reel it in. Same with a football game. You want to adjust, uh, reel the game in, do what you can to win, even if you're not presented with the most optimal situation. The hell with that. Just give the biggest slice to the best player. That's what I'm saying. Two, I love dessert. I can't be guilty about it because I have to taste everything. I experiment. 
Um, I think a lot of that has to go to teams who are bringing in players, dropping players. Blue Devils, for one, we mentioned the Alpha Tees as well. Um, teams who are seeking that higher division assistance, they're, they're trying different players, they're trying to fit them into the recipe, see what works. Um, and at a bar called Red, she was quoted as saying, I invented it's a good thing before you've been born. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> what is this, Jeopardy? <laughs> I'm saying, how, how does that piece of advice relate to the FBF playoffs? Was Martha Stewart two-way player of the year? I believe she was. This is like Alex Trebek <laughs> talking over here now. He's awesome. Yes. I, I love being compared to Alex Trebek. Thank you. I, You're I, welcome. I wear as a maid of honor. As a maid of honor. Like I wear a maid of honor. Jim. Yes. How does that relate to the playoffs? Um, related to playoffs, you know that there's going to be those players who really stand out, put the team on their back, and carry them to success. So... You need to know who they are. Fair. Um, I'm going to go for one this week. Uh, everyone, this is the playoff push. There are very few games remaining. Make sure that you show up. Make sure you don't forfeit. Nothing is worse. We've all paid to play. It's a great league. It's a lot of fun. Show respect for it. Show respect for the players on the other side of the field. Um, it, it, this time of year, it gets very frustrating for uh, teams that show up the field only to see their opponents haven't been there. Honestly, I've been in that position where I have I had to literally find people in the 11th hour, get them to the field, get them dressed. They've never played a down the football in their life. It was terrible, but it was still a good time, and we did a service to the other team, and we respected them by showing up to play. So please make sure to do that. Uh, MK, final thoughts? Well, as a scorekeeper, uh, make sure you have your roster. Why do you, why do you seem like one of those older women in a university class who relates to everything like, as a mother, I think that. Well, sorry. As a mother, as what do you say? Let's correct that, please. As <laughs> vice president of internal relations here at FP. As a mother, yes. Make sure the score sheets are properly aligned with your roster sheet. Okay, that's enough from Soccer Mom Mo Khan, G GMK. We were too nice to each other. This needs Seriously, to this is odd. This is odd. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, GM, for tuning for coming to the show. Uh, although you were later than you should have been. Uh, thank you, Eagle, for was, doing I all the work. I was in the chair when the show started. Fair. Thank you, Mokan, for delaying the, the start to the other shows. Uh, right. And I want to thank everyone for listening. It's been a great season so far. Let's keep it up. But most of all, I want to thank you all for letting me hey, be myself. Oh, that's our song. I missed the cue, yeah. Let me be myself.